Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for all the things that you have done for us and for all the things that you will do in the future as well. In this special moment, we want to ask for your guidance. We want to ask that you grant us the ability to understand your word because we want to learn more about you and we want to um, do what's right. And we know that you are the only one that can teach us what's good for us. We want to thank you for all the people that will listen to this message. We ask you, Father, that you bless them and their families and that you grant us the ability to understand your mysteries because we ask you all this in the name of your son Christ Jesus Amen Peace be unto you my name is Crispin Amador and today we're going to study the Word of God, 
this um, Sabbath lesson named the parable of the vine. This is something that um, some of you may already know. For some of you might be a new lesson that um, we'll hear. And we want you all to understand that God's word is powerful. God's word is something that we all should be looking for and written as much as we can so that we can understand the word of God. And now that we have the time that we can read, that we can listen to God's word, I want to invite you all to uh, pay attention to what God says through this message. And let's all uh, learn what God wants to tell us through this parable, the parable of the vine. Let's read the object, objective that our um, brothers had put in this Sabbath lesson, which is, which says, to know that if we break the commandments of the Almighty God, we will face calamity and distress in our lives, just as taught by the parable of the vine. That is the main purpose that our brothers did this lesson for us. For to understand that if we break the law, something will happen, and definitely that it will be something not good for us, especially if we break God's law, which is what we all should be very caref uh, careful because if we break God's law. We are in a serial, serious trouble. It says that we will face calamity and distress. And that's something that right now the whole world is facing through this pandemic. And there is a reason why things like this happen. We should all be very careful and pay attention to how we are doing things. And if they are right in God's eyes. So let's proceed and read what Ezekiel chapter 19 verse 10 to 14 says which is the scripture written that we have in this Sabbath lesson. And it says like this. Your mother was like a vine in your bloodline, planted by the waters, fruitful and full of branches. Because, because of many waters, she had strong branches for scepters of rulers. She towered in a stature above the thick branches and was seen in her height amid the dense foliage. But she was plucked up in fury. She was cast down to the ground and the east wind dried her fruit. Her strong branches were broken and withered. The fire consumed them. And now she is planted, planted in the wilderness, in a dry and thirsty land. Fire has come out from rod of her branches. And the bower her fruit. 
so that she has no strong branch, a scepter for ruling. This is a lamentation and has become a lamentation. Amen. As we read here in Ezekiel chapter 19, verse 10 to 14, we see that God is telling us this message through the parable. The parable of the vine. And we also see that this vine had so many waters that was strong that was that made it have fruits good fruits but it came to a time where it was destroyed it was cast down and broken and we see that it was also consumed by fire basically it disappeared it um her whole fruitful life changed and if we compare that to a person's life, we see that um, when someone comes to God and does the right thing, starts obeying God from the heart, they are blessed and they have a good life. But when they go away from God, they get lost very easily. They have so many problems. They uh, get frustrated. They don't understand what happens in their lives because they find no meaning and have no purpose in their lives anymore. So, that's what we can understand through this scripture written that we can be like this vine with so much good things in our lives. But if we stay close to God, if we leave him, if we go away, we will dry it up and get lost in this world. So we also have a memory verse that our brothers had put us in this Sabbath lesson, which says, your mother was like a vine in your bloodline, planted by the waters, fruitful and full of branches because of many waters. Ezekiel chapter 19, verse 10. Your mother was like a vine in your bloodline. So we see that in the memory verse, we get that comparison that This vine had so much waters and it was fruitful and full of branches because of the waters that it has. Just as how people or men are when they are close to God, they are happy, they are blessed, because God is with them. 
we believe that we, if we stay close to God, that's how we are. That's how we live our lives. We have so many blessings. We um, succeed in the things that we do. And that's how God is telling us through this work today that we are like a vine next to waters. But let's all read what the study analysis says. So let's read the first paragraph, which says like this. Another parable mentioned by the prophet Ezekiel is found in the final portion of chapter 19. In this parable, we see that the people of Israel again, particularly the kingdom of Judah, but now as a vine planted next to the waters where it could be fruitful because of them. That's what we see that the kingdom of Judah was compared like this vine. They had so many blessings from God and they were fine. But as we keep reading, the scripture, we find that they started doing the wrong things and they faced calamity. The kingdom of Judah, as we have been studying in the past Sabbath lessons, we see that they committed sins that directed them to um, destruction that stopped the blessings from God. They were also blessed because they were obeying the word of God, just as many of us do. When we obey God, we um, are blessed. Because we do the right things and we see that God does what he says he will do for us if we obey him, if we follow his rules. But let's keep studying the, the paragraphs. So... The next one says, Psalm 1 helps us understand that a person who meditates in the law of God and puts it to practice is compared to a tree planted next to rivers and which brings forth its fruit and its leaf will not wither. Therefore, in the parable we are considering, we find the kingdom of Judah kept the will of God at least at some point in time. In Ezekiel, we read, chapter 19, verse 11, we read, She had a strong branches for scepters of rulers. The good rulers reference were men such as David, Asa, Hezekiah, and Josiah. So we see that the kingdom of Judah at some point in time, they obeyed God, 
the way they were supposed to do it. But it was also because they had good leaders, good men leading them, such as King David and this man, Asa, Hezekiah, and Josiah. That's such a, a blessing that they had at that time. Just as we do nowadays, we had if we listen to our leaders, our ministers, we will be fine because all our, our leaders that teach us God's word is for our own good, not for them or their families. It's for, uh, for us, for our own good. And that's how the kingdom of Judah was being blessed because these leaders were teaching them the right path, the right thing to do, which is obey the Lord. But we'll keep reading the paragraphs and see what happened next. However, we also read that the vine was plucked up in fury. She was cast down to the ground, and the east wind dried her fruit. The former references how the kingdom of Judah was removed from God's presence due to their sins. Additionally, the three siege that Jerusalem suffered demonstrated the wrath with which it was uprooted from God's presence. The east wind, the wind that blows from where the sun rises, represents the destruction carried out by Babylon, which is found east of Israel. The destruction was predicted by the messengers of God. However, since they were not heard, there was no way to avoid it. As we can see, what this paragraph is, says that the kingdom of Judah had been advised or taught that if they didn't keep the commandments of our God, they would they were going to face calamity, destruction. They were going to suffer the consequences. And as we see that the destruction of the kingdom of Judah was predicted by the prophets, but the, this kingdom did not pay attention to what the prophets were saying. And it's interesting that we see that at that time, the people had leaders to guide them in the right path, but they were so busy or not interested in doing what the leaders said 
that they were supposed to do. Just as it happens nowadays that our leaders are teaching us God's law, God's commandments every Saturday. We read them, we listen to them, and sometimes that's not enough. People still go away from God. And just as the kingdom of Judah that didn't listen to the prophets, we do not listen to the pastors or ministers. And that's a big, big problem for us because if we don't listen if we don't pay attention to God's word we will also face calamity we will also be destroyed by all the things that happened in this world Let's keep reading what the analysis says. It says like this, the expression planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty land, Ezekiel chapter 19, verse 13, can be interpreted as when Israel lived in a pagan nation, which was Babylon. The scripture written says that this vine was planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty land. And that's referring to when Israel lived in a pagan nation which was Babylon and that's because we know that Babylon was not a place where God was worshipped where God was known as a as the main supplier just like so many places where we see that you cannot say you are a christian because they don't like that they don't believe in what we believe. That's how Israel was at that time when it was in Babylon. They were in a place where no one really wanted to know about God. They didn't like God. They wanted to do their own things. They wanted to be free and do whatever they wanted to do. And that is how many people are acting right now in this time. They want to be free. They don't want to be told what to do. They want to live their lives the way they think it's right. And as we see that at that time when Israel lived in Babylon, they were not getting the blessings from God the way they used to. Because they were in a place where people didn't worship God at all. They were... even doing the things that 
the people of Babylon was doing. And it was definitely not the following of God's law. But let's keep reading the paragraphs. And it says, in the kingdom of Judah, it seems that there were no strong branch, a scepter for ruling left. Since after Zedekiah, the last king of Judah was dethroned, there has not been any other king in Israel. Nevertheless, as the church of God, we know that the moment will come when the strong rod will return. The Messiah of Israel, our Lord Jesus, to take the kingdom that belongs to him. As we read here, that during the kingdom of Judah, there were no strong branch or scepters for ruling left because they were disobeying our God and they started doing the wrong things. So as we read that since after Zedekiah, the last king of Judah was dethroned. There has not been any other king in Israel. But we know that there will be a time where there will be a king to rule, to guide the people of Israel. And that king, as we, the church of God, know that it's our Lord, the Son of God, Christ Jesus, that there, that there, there will be a time where he will come back and take the kingdom that belongs to him. And it's such a blessing to know that we are not alone, even though he is not here with us in person, we cannot see him. We believe that one day he will come back and he will reign and take his kingdom and show the people in this world that he is the king of kings. He is the one that gave his life to gain the kingdom that belongs to him as the son of God. We see that he will come back and we will, if we obey God, we will be there to see him as the king of Israel. The next paragraph says it's important to know it's important to mention that the parables of the lioness and her cubs and the vine are mentioned by the prophet Ezekiel in 594 before Christ hence the first parable talks about what already happened 
and the second refers to what would happen if they didn't repent from their sins. However, the people did not repent even though they knew God's admonition. Consequently, the outcome of this parable had its fulfillment a few years after it was prophesied. Thus, we can learn that everything God has said through his servants, the prophets, will come to pass. If we listen to God's voice that comes from them and turn from the evil way, God will embrace us and therefore be loved brethren. Let's walk firmly on the path that will take us to salvation and everlasting life. This is a message that we all should be thankful for because God is telling us through this parable of the kingdom of Judah, how things can change drastically if we go away from him. God used to talk to his people through the prophets. He used to give send the messages so that they can be blessed and so that they could keep doing the right things. But as we see that the kingdom of Judah, at some point, they did not listen to the leaders. They did not listen to the prophets. They disobey God's word and let's all think about it if we come to church and listen to the message but when we get out of church we do not obey, we do not do what we just heard, we will be doing it wrong. And that's something that I personally think that God does not like at all, that we come to church and listen the message, but when we get out of church, we don't practice that message. We don't practice what we learn. And that's something that I think stops God's blessings to our lives. And we do not want that i'm sure that you don't want that i don't want that i want to be doing the right things in the eyes of god and that's something that we should all be very careful and meditate are we really doing what God likes? Are we, really a pay, are we really paying attention to God's word? Are we really listening to his preachers? I hope, I hope you are. And 
I hope that you value the leaders that you have in your location, in the place where you congregate every weekend. Because the leaders that work in that location are people that God sent to you to tell you what's right and to even tell you if you are doing it wrong. So let's all be thankful that there are men willing to work for God and willing to teach you the right path. This is the teaching that I get from this Sabbath lesson. How we can be or get lost if we do not follow God's commandments. If we go away from God, we are lost. So let's um, finish with the questionnaire that we have in this Sabbath lesson. We have some questions to answer. And the first one, says like this. How is how is Psalm 1 related to the parable of the vine? If we read Psalm 1, we find that the people that obey God or the person that loves God is always blessed and is compared like a tree that is next to waters. And just like that tree that is next to waters that he has nothing, nothing to worry about. That's how the people that trust in the Lord are. They are happy. They are because they are blessed and they have nothing to worry about because God is with them. That's how we see that someone is related to the parable of the vine. Question number two. Who could be the strong branches for scepters of rulers? We see that the strong branches for scepters or rulers can be the men that keep God's word. Just as King David, Asa, and Hezekiah, and Josiah, and many more, many more men that obeyed God and that follow God's commandments. Those are the strong branches for scepters of rulers. Question number three says, in whom did the expression in the vine that was plucked 
of inferior fulfilled, we see that it was fulfilled in the tribe of Judah because it was destroyed or cast down by Babylon. Question number four. What is the east wind? As we read it in the paragraph, the east wind is the wind that blows from where the sun rises. Question number five. Who does the east wind represent? Well, as we also read it in the paragraph, it says that it represents the destruction carried out by Babylon. That's what the east wind represents. The destruction carried out by Babylon. Question number six. Did God warn the kingdom of Judah of what would happen if they did not turn from their evil path? Yes, he did. And who did he send? As we also read, he sent the prophets. These men that were the messengers from God. These men that told the people of Israel what was right to do. And they were not heard many times. Question number seven. In what year did Ezekiel prophesy this parable? As we read, it was in 594 years before Christ. There's the time when the prophet prophesied this parable. And question number eight, what can we learn from the parable of the vine? What can we learn from this parable? Well, I want to say that God is always sending people to tell us what's right to do. And it's on us to pay attention to that. Because you cannot expect God come from heaven to tell you what to do. He is always sending messengers just la like he did in the past. He's still sending us messengers until now. He is telling us what is right to do through his preachers. The ministers that every weekend and sometimes during the week are telling us or teaching us God's word. And we just need to pay more attention to that. Listen to God's messengers. Because if we do not listen, we will suffer calamity and distress. And I don't think that any of you want that to happen. I don't think that that's something that you want you and your family face. Let's all get closer to God. Let's read the Bible more. Let's pray more 
so that we know what he wants us to do. And so we know that what we are doing is taking us in the right path. And just so we are sure that what we are doing today is going to take us to the to salvation and to one day obtain the everlasting life. That's all I can tell you. And that's what I got from this Sabbath lesson. I um, thank you all for your attention and your time. And may God bless you always. Peace be unto you. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn this message and for giving us the time to 
meditate in your word. We want to thank you for all that you do for us. We want to thank you for all the blessings that you keep giving us. Even though we sometimes get a little confused and may feel alone as we read in your scripture we are not we know that you listen to the prayers and you are there to listen to us 24/7 and we thank you for that we we thank you for giving us the power to be able to read and understand your word and for leaders that you put in our lives to teach us what's right and to keep us in the right path we want to thank you for all the men and women that work for your people just as today the people that has put time and effort to make this service possible we thank you lord for them we ask you to bless them to always keep them safe and provide them on all the things that you know they need we thank you for all the people that will listen to this message and the people that just heard and we want to ask you that you bless them and their families and because we know that you can do it and there is no thing impossible to do for you thank you lord for your patience for all, all the love that you showed to us every day and we ask all this in the name of your son jesus amen